Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thank you for dropping by for yet another chess, well, chess talk video. Today's video is going to be kind of laid back. We're going to be talking about an idea that I've been kind of tossing around in my head for quite a while. And that idea is why are not more people playing chess? I mean, arguably you could say, Alex, there's more people playing chess now than there has ever been. Chess.com is not allowing people to play that usually come. I've had to like sit and wait to play. There's just an overwhelming interest in chess right now. But yes, true. However, I mean, think about how many people, how many people play chess? Maybe a million, two million, just give me a number. How many people are there on this planet? Like eight billion or something like that. What is the percentage of people that enjoy playing chess in your community out of, let's say, a thousand people, how many people play chess, okay? So that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today, or at least if you guys stick around, not only am I going to talk about my thought process as far as like what I believe is the reason why not so many people play chess, but I'll, I will also try to give you guys some, some may, maybe some helpful advice, uh, something like if you're like me, and I only play chess every once in a while. If you're like me and you realize that from time to time you start to remember the last time you've played chess and you think, wow, it's been a while. Why, why is that the case? We love watching chess games online. We enjoy that. We enjoy reading chess books. We like to analyze. But, um, you know, when was the last time we played chess? You know, like some of you guys might, that might be watching the video might say, I play chess every day, every day now, but let's say a couple of months from now when you stop playing chess for a while and there will be this long hiatus of not playing chess, what is the reason? Why do we not continuously play chess? And why are so many people not even wanting to play chess, period? So, uh, stick around. I'm gonna kind of dissect this real quick, the best way I can, and give you guys my honest opinion. And please be sure to comment on this video if you guys have other suggestions or other reasons you feel like why people don't play chess as often. Let me dissect this. So what is chess, you know, what exactly is chess? If you have to describe what chess is as a game uh, to somebody from outer space, in as few words as possible, what would, you, what would you best describe it as? And I would probably describe it as it's a game that's usually played between two players that allows the person or the people playing the game to utilize certain parts of their brain, certain mental faculties. Primarily, chess relies upon visualization, creative thinking, planning, strategizing, prioritizing maybe. I don't know, maybe a couple of other things. You might add the type of things that you feel like are utilized best in our mind while playing chess. And it is a game about an outcome, but that's not important, okay? To me, that's what I would probably describe chess as being. And if we look at chess on that level, it's, it's more or less, it's an opportunity for us to utilize visualization and to get better at being able to visualize stuff, get better at prioritizing, get better at planning, strategizing, then it becomes not necessarily a chess game with an outcome, it becomes an opportunity to utilize those mental faculties. So when next time that you go to play a game of chess against somebody, instead of saying, here I am about to play this 20 minute game that I hope I win, no, you're gonna be more optimistic about the whole, the whole game because approaching it, you're gonna say, um, this is an opportunity that I will have for the next 20 minutes or however long you're going to play the game to utilize those mental faculties. And thank you so much uh, for allowing me the opportunity with the game of chess to be able to utilize those faculties because those faculties, let's face it, are also important in everyday living things, okay? In fact, one of the, one of the things that I could compare chess to, it, not so much so, but reading. Reading is also an activity that we do in which we are using visualization, in which we are using creative thought process, reading comprehension. Well, we don't use reading comprehension in chess as much, but reading comprehension, but primarily visualization. But the biggest difference between like reading and chess is that 
Chess has an outcome of win or loss, and reading does not. You don't actually lose or win while reading, and therefore a lot more people read as opposed to play chess. It's because people, and this is kind of what I'm getting to in this video, people are reluctant to face this type of loss that we face in a chess game. Now, if people are playing a game that, for example, requires dice and you know, maybe randomness and coincidence and all this type of stuff, then when they lose that particular game, they don't necessarily feel the entire loss upon themselves. They're saying, well, there was there was randomness and the dice was thrown and, and it wasn't my fault that the dice landed at a lower number and I lost my game. So you, you basically do not take upon yourself entirely the reason why you lost as opposed to in chess, you have this this game and somebody can say, well, here are the blunders and the mistakes and the inaccuracies you made. This is the reason why your outcome was the way that it was. You know, let's face it, face your loss, you know. So people don't necessarily like that. They the People already face loss in everyday life and that loss is not as straightforward. I'm not talking about loss of a loved one or a loss of a relative or something. That's a whole different matter. I'm talking about loss of you made inaccuracies throughout the day and you didn't get the promotion that you were hoping for or the inaccuracies that you've made were not necessarily in a day period. They might have been in, in a period of a year or something. You were working and you made uh, you know this, this sort of chain of inaccuracies or blunders or whatever. You didn't achieve something that you wanted to, but in our life, we don't take account of all those inaccuracies because either we don't notice them or we basically too much time has passed between the inaccuracies. We didn't achieve the success we wanted to achieve. We didn't, we, we didn't achieve the outcome we, we kind of hoped for, but we cannot draw a chain of events in our life as readily as we can in chess. Because in chess, somebody can say, nope, no, no, it started on move number three. There's your first inaccuracy. There's your first, second blunder and there's your loss, okay? So we can lay it out in chess and we can tell people, yep, you lost. I mean, let's just, just face it, okay? And people might be okay with one loss in, in that situation, but people might be, and then they start losing more and then it's sort of, uh, I guess it hurts their ego because maybe, maybe through all the losses or the the micro losses that they face in regular life, so they kind of sort of, you know, their ego might be here or their, their expectation of where they should be in, in life might be a little bit here. And then the chest kind of puts them in this situation so that there's a, there's a disbalance between reality and maybe expectations. And this, this happens in life too, but we don't see that as often because nobody points points our face into it. Nobody actually lays things out as we could lay it out in chess, okay? So consecutively, many losses in chess can cause the person to feel kind of, I don't know, maybe negative. I do, maybe you don't, but I do. And so as a result, a lot of people play and then they reach a certain level and then they might start playing and, and then they might stop and they might not play as much anymore. And then there's the, you know, the, the other excuses, I guess, that will follow to justify why you're not playing. Maybe I really don't have any more time. I'm very busy nowadays. So let's just throw that out of the window because I, I, I cannot, you know, I, I cannot readily accept I don't have time because there's a thing called priority. And if you really feel like chess might be something that you would want to incorporate in your life and it's important to you, you could always set aside 30 minutes in the evening or something like that to where, yes, you could find time instead of sitting, checking Facebook or whatever, you could play that game. I mean, most of us will find time somewhere. If you truly don't have time, I feel sorry, but most of the time people can find time. Uh, chess sets are too expensive. No, well, you, you can play chess without a chess set. You can play chess. I don't have anybody to play chess with. You can play online. In fact, that's free. You can join chess.com or lead chess. You can play online. Uh, chess sets aren't all that expensive. You can get a really great tournament chess set for under, under $60 and you'd be really happy with it. Uh, you could join a, a local club. You could feel like you're part of something. I mean, it's great. It's great, but I'm, I'm digressing. So there's excuses that will, will be created in each and every one of us why we do not want to continue playing chess, okay? But 
basically this is where this is kind of my opinion I might be completely wrong and you guys might put on your own comments as to why you feel like based on your experiences why did you start playing chess and then you stopped what was the reasons it's kind of more a psychological discussion here as opposed to you know as opposed to actual chess discussion but face it face face it in yourself why why did you stop you were playing you were doing great you were putting the time then you stopped because losses, consecutive losses, don't feel very good. Now, if you've never played chess before and you want to take up chess, I would probably say, here's the thing, the first 100 games or so of chess, you feel the losses a lot more because you take them a little bit more deeper. It's, it's not something that we have control of so much so, but it's really in anything. If you start a new activity, a new sport, a new hobby, the first so much time when you're beginning, you feel more of like, oh, I should be progressing at this level, or I should be progressing this much, or I should be gaining this much rating. And so many times I've read on forums, people were like, I just started playing game of chess and I just don't understand, you know, I was at level ELO of, um, you know, 1100, now I'm at 1400 and it only took me like a couple of weeks. And, and how do I progress to ELO 1800? It's like, dude, chill, chill, man. Like, uh, you know, once you play the 10,000 games, then to you, losses and wins don't mean as much. I used to run on a treadmill when we used to live at the apartment. I used to run on a treadmill every day. I would run for, oh, I, it's four miles, four miles. And I ran for years. And I remember there was one time there was this guy, there was this young guy that came over and there was treadmills were really close to each other. So he gets on the treadmill right next to me and I'm running seven miles Per hour so it's a decent speed but it's not really anything to write home about he gets on there he, guys younger than me by at least 10 years he gets on there and he starts running he kind of checks my my running speed starts adjusting his I'm just sitting there I think I was either listening to music or I don't remember what I was doing I was zoned into running I could care less but I, I still noticed him so then he like got to the same speed that I was then he started increasing the speed and then he really increased the speed to really show how it's done, how running should be done. And then he ran for about, I don't know, 10 minutes and he slowed down and gave up and got off and, and walked away. I've, I haven't ever seen that guy come to the gym before. This was probably one of his really few running episodes, but he did want to show me that running can be done at a much faster pace and, and a better quality of running than what I'm doing. I don't know for what reason. I really didn't need that particular show showmanship, but I received it. So great. Maybe that made him feel better that he doesn't go to the gym often, but he came and he ran and he outcompeted me, which nobody asked for anyways. And he left feeling happy. Maybe I've already ran thousands of miles at this point to me. It didn't really take me. It didn't bother me at all. So the fact that he was showing this off, really didn't bother me one bit because at that point I've already I've already traversed so many miles like okay somebody comes and runs faster you can run on all fours you can run on on your hands instead of your feet it really won't impress me because I've got my own my own goal to achieve okay so I feel like once you play like 10,000 games or whatever the losses and the wins don't really mean as much to you it's just you become more in tune with hey this particular strategical maneuvering here is is in front of me and it's interesting and this is what I'm doing so you're not really thinking in terms of losses and wins past that point but the first hundred or so games or the first thousands it'll still feel to you like oh man losses and wins okay so that's basically what I want to kind of talk about the idea of being okay losing um, people are may not necessarily be okay losing consecutively because it'll hurt them but if I feel like if you lose enough games it is through the losing of the games that you will eventually become more and more accustomed to losing and then you will be more okay with losing and it is only when you're going to be more and more okay with losing that you're going to start to feel better about winning and about coming back so you you have to be you have to be totally okay with losing in chess okay so and it teaches us you know, different qualities about like life in general. It's okay to lose. It's not really gonna, it's fine. And, and chess is a great platform on which you can exercise those, those particular qualities or challenges or whatnot, you know, because chess can be inconsequential. So it means that, you know, you play or win or lose a game, 
may not mean much, okay, unless you're a professional chess player. So, what do we do? What are my suggestions? First of all, getting through the getting through the first thousand games may be kind of challenging. Afterwards, it, it's going to become easier. It's going to become easier when you're okay with losing, when it doesn't really matter to you as much. Uh, what I would probably suggest is do not uh, do not obsess about chess and find other things that you can do around. Create a busy life. If your life is not super busy this is the point at which you burn out in chess. I've seen a lot of people that are like younger in school or whatever, they have large times where they're spending the entire days uh, playing chess. I would definitely not suggest doing that even if you have a lot of time on your hands. What I would probably suggest is find other activities to surround chess with so that you can like basically learn to forget the losses. That's, that's probably the most important phrase in this entire video is learn mechanisms like coping mechanisms to forget the losses it's so important you have to learn how to forget the losses and the way to forget the losses for me for example is i read a lot of books nowadays so if i lose myself in chess and i play for an hour and i, I lose myself in chess as in like i tune in myself in chess and i forget everything else and i play for an hour and maybe i'll lose three four games consecutively does it feel bad yeah a little, a little bit not too bad then I'll go and if I have time, other than, you know, maybe I need to wash the dishes or clean the house or tend to the kids or do whatever or have to go to work or, you know, a lot of uh, stuff to keep me busy. If I have time to sit, I'm not going to continue playing chess. I'll actually go and read a book and then I'll lose myself in the book. And by losing yourself in the book, you're going to start to forget the losses of chess or I'll go exercise. And by the time I'm finished exercising, like it, an hour has gone by, I've already forgotten the games and, and I've completely forgotten the games. If somebody will come to me at that point, they'll say, didn't you just play chess an hour ago? I'll, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I think I did. But it doesn't bother me anymore. I've learned how to cut, cut off, cut off those, cut off those lingering emotions of you losing. Just cut them off. Put something in between chess losing and the rest of your day. Put something that will make you forget that more easily. That's in my, it has worked for me really well. Read a book, get yourself busy, do stuff, go to the store, get groceries, do errands or whatever. Just don't let yourself sit there and dwell on your losses. Don't go back and try to play more games. It's really not going to help you out more. Try to prevent yourself from burning out. Don't play way too many games at once. But at the same time, I'm going to leave you with this and this will maybe be helpful. I wanted to make this video back in January to make it like a, a New Year's resolution to some of you guys that like wanted to start off the year right and play more chess games. But uh, this is what I would probably suggest is when I was when I was running a lot on the treadmill, what has helped me is I would create a little piece of paper, not a big one, but a small one. I tape it right next to the door. And I put a little pencil right there. So whenever I would walk in, there would be like a hanger thing at back of the apartments and there would be my little piece of paper tape to the wall. It bothered nobody, so I had it there. And every time that I would go running on a treadmill or go running outside, I'd run my four miles, I'd come back in and I would erase the previous mark, so whatever it was, and I would put the, the number plus four. So if, if I was at 50 miles so far, I would cross it up. I would cross it out and I would put 54. And so it went and so it went and every day that I would run, I would cross out the number when I would get home and it was a habit. And I would put that number plus four. And so eventually I, the numbers grew and that allowed me to visually see my progress, a progress that nobody else may necessarily be all that enthusiastic about. Nobody's really all that excited. You're the only one who's excited about your progress. In fact, in our today's world and community, I mean, think about like what captivates your mind, what, what, you know, Netflix, different streaming platforms, you know, you get home, what takes your time is the community sort of setting up time in, in, in general, you know, what are the things in your community that are praised for you to spend time on and which are not, if you're reading oh, like classical books that are, are made to, to make you smarter, to make you more creative, to make you, you see the world in a much more enlightened way, nobody cares. That's why libraries and books are not advertised like some of the other stuff, like video games and whatnot, because 
Because if it's a it's an activity like chess or if it's an activity like reading a book, you are the only one that's truly going to benefit from sitting down and spending hours doing it. And the community will be like, whatever, but you, you are the one who will benefit from it. And that's why it's so important, okay? So, so basically what I was talking about is the list. Uh, when I was r running, before my son was born, uh, it, my, my wife was about a couple of months pregnant and I got it into my head. I said, before the end of her pregnancy, I'm going to attempt to run 1,000 miles. That was my goal. I just set it in my brain and I, I said, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set 1,000 miles before he's born. So I calculated the amount of, of days and everything and I was like, well, I, th I think I should be able to do it if I run four miles a day. And so what happened is I had a goal in mind, I had the piece of paper and I was I was basically trying to achieve that goal in that time frame. So I ran and I ran and I ran and, and as the months got closer and closer, I realized, I started recalculating and I realized that, oh, in order for me to make that thousand miles, now all of a sudden I need to make about 5.5 miles a day instead of four because I still have a couple of hundred miles left and we're really running out of time. I started running a little bit more. Um, I did not reach my goal before he was born, but I have to say I got to about 890 out of a thousand. That's still something. That still allowed me to every day feel excited about me trying to do this. That's what I would suggest to you guys if you're looking for a way to play more chess in 2023 or whatever year it is or moving forward, create a goal. So create a goal this year. I know it's already February, but it's not. Set a little piece of paper and start doing what I did and start playing and say to yourself, okay, uh, is it doable for me to play 1,000 chess games before the end of 2023? That's what, maybe four games a day from now on forward? Doesn't seem like much. Let's do it, you know, create a piece of paper, tape it to the wall where you don't have to remove it, put a little piece of pencil right next to it. Every time you play a couple of games, cross it out, put the new number on there. Tell yourself this. And if you do it just like I did it with running, I feel confident that if you set this type of a thing and, and you just play through the games. Now, one of the things that of course you would wanna avoid is you would wanna avoid feeling like you need to achieve those numbers and so the games or the quality of your game starts to lack because all you start to care about is the numbers. Don't do that because really the accomplishment is only your own. You're not gonna get a prize for it. It's your own satisfaction that you've been able to achieve it. Take the games at their own pace. Don't rush through them and feel, feel grateful about the fact, like I said in the beginning of this video, that really chess shouldn't be about winning or losing, even though it is. It's about the opportunity that you are receiving to, to basically utilize those, those, those mental faculties and that you should be grateful that you have the ability to utilize those mental faculties and that, you know, maybe you even some other activities will allow you to do that. But if you enjoy playing chess or you think that chess might be something that you wanna, you wanna start in 2023, moving forward, starting to pr play regularly, Try these things out. I'm gonna leave you with one word, I guess. Once you're finished watching this game, go on and go play a few games of chess. And like I said, get a piece of paper, tape it somewhere, or you know, put it, put it right next to your computer or something so you can keep note how many games you play. And you'll notice before long, once you start actually putting those numbers on the paper, you're gonna to wanna to feel, you're gonna feel compelled to actually come back, play a few more games so you can get more numbers in there and you're gonna feel like you, you have created a purpose where perhaps you've forgotten the game that you loved so much, now all of a sudden you're spending more time at it, okay? So anyways, I'm gonna leave you with that and hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching or hearing me talk about this. So like, it's all my ideas. Feel free to comment, add, or maybe, maybe argue about what I've said. I'd be happy to hear from you guys, okay? Hopefully everybody stays safe has a great weekend, even though it's ending, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.